Hi, thanks for tuning in to another video on Armor of God. It's been a truly humbling journey serving all of you and I always pray that you'll learn something important whenever you're here watching the videos in this channel. If any of you have watched The Exorcism of Emily Rose before, there's something that I'd like to point out here. There's this doctor in the room with the priest while he's doing the exorcism on Emily. And this doctor's job is to distinguish whether the case involving Emily Rose was mental illness or something else. And with that doctor in mind, I'm sure some of you have heard of Dr. Richard Gallagher. The doctor calls himself a consultant on demonic possessions, and for the past 25 years, Dr. Gallagher has helped clergy distinguish between mental illness and what he calls the real thing. He estimates that he's seen more cases of possession than any other physician in the world. So anyway, there's an interview done by our Catholic brother, Blue Collar Catholic, with this good doctor, and he shared a lot of good stuff during the interview. You can check out the full interview on Rob's channel. It's really good, and I'd already left the link to the full video down in the description area below if you'd like to check it out later on. There was, there was one incident I'll relate that literally because it's the only time in my life you've heard the expression, the hairs on the back of your neck go up. I felt that, and I was going to ask you about that. This is the only time in my life where that happened, because I had heard her in a possessed state, because I saw her in some trans states as well. So I saw, you know, people come in and out of these possessive trances. So I'd seen her in that, so I knew kind of what the demon sounded like, uh, or demons, you know, you never, it's hard to know sometimes. And the voice uses the person's vocal cords. In other words, it, it takes over, it controls the body. It doesn't sound like a ghost. I've been to many exorcisms. It doesn't sound like a ghost. It sounds like a different personality and a different tone of voice uh, is using the body just as they take over the consciousness of the individual. So it's not disembodied. So um, I was on the telephone. Uh, now I'm on a landline with uh, Father Jacques, the other exorcist involved, um, who I was, I saw much more often and saw many more cases with him. And um, he was asking me if I could come to the exorcisms. Now, you know, I had a family. I had a, you know, pretty responsible job as a clinician and an academic psychiatrist. So I couldn't travel to the exorcism, um, which was not in my area. And at the time, I mean, Julia went home. So she was like a thousand miles away. And then she would come back to somewhere in the Northeast, which I never mentioned, uh, for the exorcisms. So while he and I, the priest and I, were talking on the phone, on the landline, all of a sudden, that demonic voice, now she wasn't in on the conversation. She was a thousand miles away. That demonic voice comes in over the phone line. Wow. And it says the same repetitive stuff, you know, I'm not going to try to imitate it, but it was something to the effect of, <clears throat> listen, you uh, effing, effing priest, uh, uh, leave her alone. You're going to be sorry. Wow. She's ours. Leave her alone. And I remember what he called her, he, what he called the priest. He called him a monkey priest. Wow. Which is, Rob, I think how they regard human beings. Mm, like we're, In other words, we're just... And they, as fallen angels, as I'm sure you you recognize, they're very intelligent, and they think we're very stupid, and they and we think we're just evolved monkeys or something. Wow. So, uh, which is one of the reasons they feel like they can practically attack yeah. us, you know, because they have a right to treat us almost like animals or pets. Wow. Of course, the, of course, the other reason they attack us really is because they hate God, and so they they want to not only corrupt us, but um, Take sort of intimidate us made in the image and likeness of God. And there's something that was said by Father Vincent Lampert that will be useful to answer some who commented previously about the demons just pretending to respond to the exorcists. True, they are liars, but I hope that what I'm going to share here will make it clear for those who said that before. People often will ask me, well, why would the devil manifest? Because once it manifests, 
then the battle against it begins. Why wouldn't the devil just remain hidden? And the answer is because the devil can't. The very thing the church is doing in the rite of exorcism is throwing into the face of the demon the aspects of the Christian faith that the demon rejected as a good angel before the fall. And so when the church is doing these things, the demons become so infuriated that they lash out. Even if they don't want to, ultimately they lash out. The blessing with holy water, reminding ourselves of our baptism into Christ, the litany of the saints, invoking our blessed mother and the other great saints of the church, reading from the Psalms out of the Old Testament, reading the gospel accounts of Jesus casting out demons, breathing on the face of the person, invoking the Holy Spirit, recalling when Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. The demons reach the point where they're so infuriated that they have to manifest. And when they do, they show their true character, which is always animalistic in nature. You know, we read from the book of Genesis on the sixth day of creation, God created animals and he created humans. And what separates humans from animals? We can choose to live for the seventh day, the final day of creation, the day set aside to honor and glorify God. So when we honor and glorify God, we're truly being human in the full sense of the word. But when we reject God, which the demons have done, we're no different from the animals. And I think that's why when demons manifest, we see that animalistic character of them growling and snarling because they recognize that we as humans are still capable of that which they have rejected, namely to be with God for all eternity. God created the angels, gave them incredible knowledge, and then God said, with the knowledge I have given you, will you turn to me or turn away? And Lucifer and one third of the angels turned away. And in the Christian life, we are posed with the same question, to turn to God or to turn away. And unfortunately, a lot of people today are turning away from God and that's allowing them to fall into the grip of the devil. The good news is that the human person has the capacity to change. We can convert, we can grow in our understanding and realize, wait a minute, turning from God was not the right choice. I wanna turn back. And the ministry of exorcism is one of the ways that the church helps people who have turned their back on God to turn to God once again and to behold his face. And it's important to remember that no demons are too powerful for these exorcists, no matter what Hollywood is trying to tell us otherwise. They make it look as though these demons are all too powerful and as though there's nothing we can do to defeat them. No demon is impossible to get rid of because the power that gets rid of them is the power of God. So there is no demon that cannot be conquered. And uh, there is a hierarchy within the demonic world. You know, when the angels fell, they fell from all nine choirs. Lucifer himself was a seraphim angel in the highest choir. So there is a hierarchy in the demonic world. That's why we say Satan and his demons, because he's the head of that hierarchy in hell, if you will. And so there is that hierarchy. So there are demons that are of a greater nature than others. My experience, again, for people who are possessed, usually it's not just one demon, it's many. And the weaker demons are always the first to go. And then the one that's of a higher nature is always the last to go. But there is no demon that cannot be defeated. Impossible. And I will let me say this. Your guardian angel is more powerful than the devil himself. Yes, definitely. So we should always invoke our guardian angels. And there are three things that I like to say that our guardian angels do. They inspire us, they instruct us, 
and they illumine us, all I words, inspire, instruct, and illumine us. But your, your guardian angel is more powerful than the devil himself. And why is that? Because your guardian angel has embraced the divine will, which the devil has rejected. Therefore, the devil is an imperfect creature, and your guardian angel is a perfect creature, which even though your guardian angel comes from a lower choir than where the devil fell, because your guardian angel is a perfected creature, again, your guardian angel is greater than the devil himself. There are also apparently some comments written by a few people saying that these demons seem to be targeting only Catholics most of the time, which is of course ridiculous. There is one interview where Father Lampert said 3,500 people reached out to him, and for your information, half of those are non-Catholics. You know, many Catholic exorcists are unknown. They yeah. choose to remain anonymous. Because I'm publicly known, I do get a high volume of people reaching out to me. Yeah. And half of those 3,500 people who contact me are not Catholic. They come oh, from wow. other Christian faith traditions, other world religions, and some do come from other, really, no religious background whatsoever. The church views exorcism as a ministry of charity, so the church would always want to reach out and help anyone who's being afflicted by evil, regardless of the faith background that they're coming from. So I have worked with people from other traditions and no faith background whatsoever. But it is important to note that, you know, in an exorcism, it's not just about casting the devil out. Even more importantly, it's about inviting God in. So in working with people that are coming from another, you know, faith tradition is one thing. It's more difficult to work with people who have no faith background whatsoever. And I will say that I've seen a rise in recent years where people who have no faith background really approach the priest and treat him as a magician, mm -hmm. meaning they believe that I have special powers or abilities or I have tricks of the trade, so to speak, that I can use to make their problems go away. But they'll even tell me they want nothing to do with God. And in reality, you know, in the Christian tradition, Jesus is the exorcist. He's not a bystander. He's the main actor. And any priest who performs an exorcism, you know, in Latin, a priest acts in persona Christi, in the person of Christ. I always say if people are relying on me, we're all in trouble. But if people are relying on the power of Christ at work in and through his church and his ministers, that's the proper frame of mind to have. But because it does seem that this whole world of the occult and magic is on the rise, that priests are being viewed as magicians and not as men of God. Upon researching for this video, I came across something that Monsignor Rossetti shared about these fallen angels, and in his own words, demons are sore losers and do not accept defeat. So what happened was, after the liberation of a severely possessed young woman, Monsignor Rossetti received a number of texts from the expelled demons. It was partly written in Ukrainian, a language that young woman doesn't speak, and it said, I'm after this girl. The demons want her back desperately, and several times the demons said it explicitly, I want her back. Another time they again texted, I want the girl, I need her, give her back to me soon, you can't keep this up. But the good news is that the woman is indeed liberated and the demonic taunts help to confirm it. They were cast out and they want her back. After her liberation, Monsignor Rossetti and his team continued to assist her in living a solid Christian life and she is now able to receive the sacraments and there is a peace about her that wasn't there before. But it's also important for us to remember that even though she is liberated, the demons can still attack from the outside. This is especially true for a high-value target, which according to Monsignor Rossetti, she certainly is. And there was another incident after her liberation, after Monsignor Rossetti's online prayer session with her and again the demons taunted the exorcists with demonic texts. According to Monsignor Rossetti, the exchange lasted about 20 minutes. Get the F away from my little girl, you'll hurt yourself. May the blessed Virgin Mary cast out the demons. 
and he sent a picture of Our Lady several times because this picture was especially effective during an exorcism against the demons of impurity. And the demons again replied, Why don't you go to sleep? Go to hell you. The demons then made a comment about a specific item in the exorcist room just to let him know they were watching him. May the Blessed Virgin cast out the demons. May St. Joseph, terror of demons, cast them out. Don't you know she's going to be dead soon, Stephen? You're wasting your time. May the Blessed Virgin Mary cast out the demons. Let the little girl come to me. And again, Monsignor Rossetti texted a picture of Our Lady several times to which the demons responded by sending crass texts and pornographic images and taunts. And finally, Monsignor Rossetti texted this to the demons. In Jesus' name, I command you to look at the icon of Mary for five minutes and then leave. Very shortly after that, the text messages stopped and the demons were gone. Apparently, the command to look at the icon was effective because they can't stand looking at the Holy Mother of Jesus, particularly these demons of impurity. Monsignor Rossetti constantly reminded himself to not engage demons in a conversation, as Pope Francis repeatedly warns against. Rather, with each taunt, he sent back a prayer, either in words or in pictures, such as a holy icon of the Virgin Mary. Once again, the Virgin stomped the devil's head. Their defeat in this young woman's liberation must remind the demons that their ultimate defeat is close at hand. When the exorcist brought up the notion that time is short and they will be judged for all the evil they are now doing, the reaction is strong and immediate. It is clear they do not want to face the final judgment and their inescapable punishment. But for us, the followers of Jesus, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these signs begin to happen, stand erect and raise your heads because your redemption is at hand. Luke chapter 21 verse 27 to 28. Well, for the last part of this video, I'd like to again share an audio clip where Monsignor Stephen Rossetti will be praying for us, binding the demons in our lives. All of us are tempted by demons and the evil one to commit sin, sort of, you know, jabbering in our ear. And of course, the good angels, our guardian angel especially, is encouraging us with God's grace to do good. Of course, we have our own free will and ultimately our choices are our own. But the evil one can tempt us and sometimes his influence is even a bit more powerful. He can harass us and sometimes even seriously uh, try to block us from doing good uh, or maybe even going to mass, for example. Uh, we've noticed this especially in our ministry of exorcism with those who are possessed or severely impressed. Sometimes they are just, there's a, a powerful demonic force that almost makes it impossible for them even to step foot in the church. So what do we do? We bind the demons. And so that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to ask you to think about any sort of uh, good that you find yourself blocked from doing or evil that you seem pushed to do. Now, this could be just a psychological addiction, but it could be, you know, it could be a demonic influence. So let's get those in your mind and we'll say a prayer to block these evil demons. And in the future, you can do this prayer yourself, asking the Lord to block the evil spirits. Repeat after me. In the holy name of Jesus, I block the demons that are negatively affecting my life, especially the following evil ones. May the Lord bind these demons. May they be deaf, dumb, and blind. May they be bound. And may the Holy Spirit inspire me and enable me to do God's will. Now I'll say, in the holy name of Jesus, I bind the evil spirits that are affecting you in your life. I bind them. They are deaf, dumb, blind, and powerless. They are paralyzed. They are bound by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Angels. May you be inspired and freed from their evil influence. May you be empowered by the Holy Spirit to do God's will and to reject evil. And may Almighty God bless you, free you, and be with you always. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in God's freedom. Go in God's peace. 
Well, that's all for now. I hope all of you have learned a lot from the compilation in this video. For those of you who'd like to support our works, I left a link to our PayPal donation down in the description box below, and thank you so much in advance for any contribution from all of you. Again, thanks so much for your time, for spending your time here with us, and until the next video, stay safe, stay healthy, and God bless all of you. Sunday in Belfast. A Sabbath day in this capital city of Northern Ireland is considered by many a stranded visitor to be about as somber an experience as it's possible to get. The pubs are soundly shut. The cinemas are closed too, and of course the dance halls. The city hall broods silent and can't be open, not even for a symphony concert or an oratorio. The swings in the park are chained and silent. Sunday in Belfast is a declaration of where you stand with God. It's a day for church going. No cause here to bewail falling congregations and empty churches. Visitors may complain that there is nothing to do on a Belfast Sunday. The local reply is that there are churches enough to go to, and they are all open on Sundays. And when they do go to service, they go looking as well as they possibly can. Here, the words Sunday best still mean something, something well worth going to church to see. Best hats and Bibles.